Welcome everyone to our latest Encounter in Home series, Pray Like Jesus. For the next three weeks as a cell group, you guys are going to be hanging out and getting to know each other better, which is great. But you'll also be focusing in on the subject of prayer. We've just spent a number of weeks together studying Paul's letter to Titus in our How to Study the Bible series. And we learned then that the Bible is the number one way that God speaks to us. And prayer? Well, it's the number one way for us as God's children to speak back. The problem is, it's hard and it's difficult. And it is way too easy for all of us to go through our lives, even as Christians, hardly ever talking to God in prayer. There have been times in my life where I've went days and even weeks without praying. And I'm sure you yourselves and your leaders have had similar experiences. And it doesn't really make any kind of sense, does it? Because the God of the universe who created us and who loves us and who wants a relationship with us is available to us to talk to 24-7 wherever we are. And yet we talk about prayer and we think about prayer. We listen to other people pray and we think it's great. And we agree that prayer is vital for us as Christians. And yet still we struggle to actually pray ourselves. What is it about prayer that makes it so hard and so difficult? Take a few minutes as a group to answer the following three questions. Number one, how would you answer the question, what is prayer, if someone from school came up to you and asked? Two, what does your prayer life look like? How often do you pray and what are you praying about? And three, why do you think we struggle so much to pray as Christians? Hit pause now, and when you've finished going through the questions, hit play again. Here's another question for you all. Hands up if you know what a catechism is. If there are any hands up wherever you guys are, I'm very impressed. But for those of you who don't, didn't raise your hands, let me explain. A catechism is like a book or guide that explains what Christians believe and why they believe it. And it usually has a lot of questions and answers to help people learn about the Bible, about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and other important teachings in the Christian faith. Now, catechisms, broadly speaking, aren't put to use as often in churches these days as they once were. But interestingly, back in 2012, a group of Christians came together and created what is now known as the New City Catechism. And it's really, really helpful. And as I explored the New City Catechisms app, which is free, by the way, and really, really good, I came to the four questions and answers written there that they have on prayer. So what we're going to do next is look at each of the four questions and then take time in our cell groups, wherever you are, to discuss the answers together. And for each question, what I want you to do is go through the following three questions. Number one. How does the answer challenge your own thinking about prayer? Number two, are there words in the answer that you don't understand? Talk that through. And three, if you believe this is true and helpful, how should it impact your own prayer life? So let's have a look at what they teach us, starting with question 38 from the New City Catechism, which is, what is prayer? The answer? Prayer is pouring out our hearts to God in petition, praise, confession of sin, and thanksgiving. Hit pause now, go through the three questions, and then hit play again. Question 39 from the New City Catechism. What, with what attitude should we pray? The answer, with love, perseverance, and gratefulness, and humble submission to God's will, knowing that for the sake of Christ, he always Here's our prayers. Again, hit pause now, go through the th questions, and then hit play again. Question 40 from the New City Catechism. What should we pray? The answer, the whole word of God directs and inspires us in what we should pray, including the prayer Jesus himself taught us. You know the drill by now. Hit pause, go through the three questions, and then hit play again. And then finally, 
Question 40 from the New City Catechism. What is the Lord's Prayer? The answer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. One last time. Hit pause. Go through the three questions and then hit play again. Hopefully those catechisms were helpful in getting some good discussion going about prayer in your groups. And I really, really do recommend that you download the New City Catechism app yourself so you can check out all 52 questions and answers. There's one for every week of the year. The final question on prayer from the catechism simply laid out for us the Lord's Prayer. The prayer that Jesus used as an example to his disciples as he taught them to pray like he did when they asked. And for the next two weeks, this is the prayer that we're going to be focusing in on before considering another one of Jesus's prayers in our final week together. The section of the Lord's Prayer that we are going to explore tonight is the following. Part one. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And there are two things I want to highlight about this part of the prayer before you go into some more discussion. And the two things are as follows. The Lord's Prayer teaches us who we should be praying to. And the Lord's Prayer teaches us what we should be praying for. I'm sure a lot of you know the Lord's Prayer well. Maybe you even know it off by heart. I was taught it as a kid. But I wonder if you've ever stopped to think about the significance of those first two words. Our Father. Jesus could have taught his, his first disciples to start their prayers with plenty of other options. Like dear God or creator God or Lord of all the universe. But instead Jesus teaches his disciples and teaches us. That when we pray to God we are to pray to him as our Father. I wonder why you think that is. I think there are two things that these two words teach us. And the first is this. The use of the word are reminds us that we are not alone in the Christian life, but that we are part of a community of believers called the church. And that even when we pray, we are to keep that in mind. And not only are we to keep it in our thoughts, but it is also encourages us to actually pray together as we're going to be doing a little bit later on. The second thing these two words teach us is this. Jesus is teaching us here that we are to view God and talk to him in prayer as the loving and caring parent that he is. He is our father and we are his children. God is not only the creator God of the universe who holds everything in his hands and who controls all things, knows all things and has power over all things. But he's also our father, our loving father who cares for us and who only wants the best for us. Jesus wants us to view God and talk to him in prayer based on this truth. Now, that doesn't mean that you're doing prayer wrong if you start your prayers in a different way. Not at all. But maybe it is something to consider. That if Jesus taught his first disciples to start their prayers with our Father, that maybe we should do that more often ourselves, reminding ourselves of who he is and who we are as his children. The second thing that the Lord's Prayer teaches us is what we should be praying for. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And there are two things to think about here. Number one, God's kingdom, and number two, God's will. God's kingdom is something that Jesus talked about a lot when he was here on earth. And he taught his first disciples that the kingdom of God was something that we as his people could experience now in part, but also something that we could look forward to, because one day his kingdom, the kingdom of God, will be the only one left. And it will be everywhere and it will be perfect, and we will get to live and experience it forever in the new heaven and the new earth. And so what we are to be praying for 
Is it the values of God's kingdom and his people? Things like humility, love, mercy, justice and compassion. We to pray that these values become more and more common in the world that we are living in now. We are to do those things, be those kinds of people, but we're also to pray that earth will begin to look more and more like this future kingdom of heaven. And then the second thing we learn about prayer here is that we are to pray for God's will to be done, not our own. In Isaiah 55, 8 to 9, we read that this, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than any, than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. And basically what God is telling us here is that he knows best in every situation, in every moment. So even when we're praying for something to turn out the way that we think it should, we actually need to pause and consider that God may want something different. And that his will, his way, not our way, is actually the better way. And listen, that can be really, really hard. And in our final week, we're going to be focusing in on another one of Jesus' prayers that he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he prayed these words. My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And the cup that Jesus was talking about was the suffering and pain and humiliation that he was going to face on the cross. And he pleaded with God to stop it from happening. Yet in this really difficult moment, as he feared what was about to happen, he recognised that God's answer to his cries might actually be no. But that God's will was ultimately better, even if that was the case. And it was the case. God said no to Jesus and God's will was done. And we can sit here now knowing with complete confidence that our sin has been dealt with on the cross because of that. And so to summarise, here's what we've learned from the first part of the Lord's Prayer. Number one, we remember that we are not alone in this life, but that we are part of God's family, the church. Number two, we are to pray for each other and with each other. Number three, we are to pray to God as our Father, remembering that he is our loving Father who always wants the best for us. Number four, we are, look, we are to look forward to the day that God's kingdom is all that there is. And in the meantime, pray that this world becomes more and more like it. And number five, we are to always pray in God's will, praying that it will be done even if it goes against what we want. Take some time now to go through these final four questions, but please keep in mind, if you're running out of time, uh, please leave at least 15 minutes at the end to actually pray for and with each other before you all head home.